So another trial, uh, Dr. Bloomgarden is the leader trial, which showed a cardiovascular benefit for the GLP-1 receptor agonist uh, iraglutide. I um, was wondering if you could talk about that trial and tell us uh, with, with those results. So leader was fascinating coming as it did more or less immediately after Empereg. And um, in leader, a very potent glucose-lowering drug, liraglutide, was given in the same fashion that Dr. Inzuki described, either being uh, added to the mix or patients were receiving various other treatments. The strategy was a little bit different in as much as the uh, trial was, the, the, the centers were asked to try to achieve good glycemic control in the patients in the control group and the patients in the liraglutide group, so that there was an uptitration of non-liraglutide, non-GLP-1 receptor agonist therapies in the control group. And what was found was kind of different from what was seen in Empereg, in as much as the overall MACE, myocardial infarction, stroke, and cardiovascular mortality was decreased, but it actually did not show specific significant uh, improvement in any of the individual endpoints. Um, and indeed, if I remember correctly, heart failure, I don't think, was actually impacted. So a, a very different effect. And, and one of the differences is that the drugs that were used in the control group, such as sulfonylureas and insulin, certainly caused more hypoglycemia than liraglutide. And so we could look at this and say, well, maybe this is examining a very different aspect of diabetes treatment that rather than it being cardiovascular benefit from liraglutide, it's avoiding the cardiovascular harms of other treatments. But we, we really don't have an answer as to what the exact cause is of the benefit in this trial and then a related trial with a drug that hasn't come out yet, semaglutide, very similar, also showed cardiovascular benefit. So now we're in a new world where maybe some drugs are associated with benefit. So it's just uh, interesting to, when you compare the components of MACE, as you talked about, um, cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, uh, you'd think that if two GLP-1 receptor agonist trials were positive, that their footprint, if you will, would be the same, but that's not what we saw. Uh, in LEADER, uh, there was a reduction in cardiovascular death, which, which was the most prominent reduction, but there were non-significant reductions in non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke. So all the hazard ratios were moving in the good direction, in other words, to the left side of unity. Um, with SUSTAIN-6, uh, which is the semaglutide uh, study, uh, this is a weekly GLP-1 that's not yet available. Uh, it seemed that the most potent effect was actually on stroke, uh, which was surprising, because that's not what you typically see with uh, atherosclerosis trials. You typically see it on non-fatal MI and maybe cardiovascular mortality. Um, there was uh, a non-significant reduction in uh, non-fatal MI and also an improvement in cardiovascular mortality, leading a more potent reduction in, in MACE. Um, now, I suspect that this may not reflect the inherent uh, differences between these drugs, although I could be wrong. I suspect it has to do more with the patient populations, right. some of the methodologies, the duration of treatment. Um, but uh, I, I think it, 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 it leads us to uh, understand that you cannot appreciate, I think, uh, the effects of these individual drug categories until you get at least three or four trials under your belt. So you, you can see the the overall effect of, right. of the class. Yeah. And, and there's, the, there's the play of chance here that despite the fact that these are very large trials with thousands of participants, still the, they're not powered really to look at individual endpoints unless there's some unexpected benefit as we think might be the case with heart failure with epigliflozin. Yeah, so for practicing clinicians and for those who, who pay for these drugs, uh, uh, some, some real implications, I'd imagine. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I, I think first it's tremendously exciting that there are now two drugs. Uh, uh, you know, if you look at the history of diabetes, there were, you know, metformin was the only drug ever shown a decrease uh, mortality in people with diabetes, the only diabetes 
medication. Now we have two new ones in a, in a relatively short period of time. And, uh, uh, you know, I think the questions that remain are, are some of the things that are already highlighted. One, um, to what population does this refer to? So clearly in those at very high risk for cardiovascular disease and established cardiovascular disease, which were the groups that were studied uh, uh, here, there's benefit. <clears throat> does the benefit extend throughout the class? Uh, there's evidence pro and con and, you know, in, in each of these uh, 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 that, that need to be sorted out. But, but regardless of all of that, I think the headline of uh, thinking about these drugs in patients uh, with cardiovascular disease and diabetes has now moved way up in the, uh, in the thinking, I think, of providers. And certainly one of the major driving forces for why we treat diabetes to begin with and why payers pay for the treatment of diabetes is not so much because we want to see a lower blood sugar, but because we want <laughs> folks to live longer, healthier lives. And so ultimately, uh, these types of outcome trials, um, particularly if we are seeing reductions in major cardiovascular events, um, are, are exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's the dilemma that what we'd like to do is say, when you develop diabetes, if you're treated in such and such a fashion, you will live longer and you'll be healthier. Doing such a trial would require 10 times as many patients, three times as long a duration, and instead of costing a mere few hundred million dollars, might cost several billion dollars and no one has the resources to undertake those trials, um, certainly a pharmaceutical company. And you know, we have to see, are we going to go in the direction of actually championing this type of study so that we can answer the question of the insurance companies, what's really gonna help our patients?